Hello, welcome to another video. In the next couple of videos, I may be doing some trig identities because it's an essential part of calculus, or whatever math you plan to do um, after now. So whenever you get a trig identity or you have trig on both sides and you're told to show that the right-hand side is the same as the left-hand side, you just want to ask yourself, where am I starting from and where am I going? Because it doesn't matter whether you start from the left or from the right. As long as you can start from here and show your final answer is the right-hand side, you're good. Or you can start from the right and go to the left. So there is no rule which direction you want to start. How do you know where to start? Well, you want to just look at what you know. What do you remember from trig? And how can you change what you know so that it, you can use it on what you have and get what you want to do? So for the sake of this video, I'm going to go from the right to the left. And when I'm done, I'm going to go from, from the left to the right. I don't know my left from my right. I'm going to go from the left to the right and then from the right to the left, just to show you that it doesn't matter what direction you go. Just know how to manipulate. Let's get into it. So the very first thing I want you to know is that whenever you're going from a, an addition or subtraction of any two things and you're trying to make it a product, there just has to be some identities. There has, there, there has to be an identity that you will use. Okay. And the most common identity you use when you're dealing with converting addition or subtraction to multiplication are the Pythagorean identities. I just spoke bad English. Now I can't recall my chain of thought, but it's okay. Just understand this is math. Okay. You, the, some identities you essentially need are the following. You need to recall that. Let's write them here. Okay. Because you see, we're going from addition or subtraction to multiplication. You have to recall that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. And you can now get addition or subtraction by moving this around, maybe writing this as sine squared theta equals one minus cosine squared theta. But this is one of the most important identities. It's called the Pythagorean trig identity because it's from the Pythagorean formula, okay? A modification of this is if you divide everything by sine, you're gonna end up with one. Here, you're gonna have cosine over sine is cotangent, so cot cotangent squared theta equals one over sine squared theta is cosecant squared theta, okay? Or if you divide everything by cosine, you're gonna end up with tan squared theta here, and then you have here plus one equals one over cosine squared is secant squared theta. So you see that most conversions from plus to minus will come from this identity. And do not say you don't remember. This is something you need to memorize if you need to be able to do trig identities safely, especially when you go from plus to multiplication or from division to addition and subtraction. This is usually the transition line. Any of these can show up. You can move the cotangent to this side and do whatever you want. So now let me start by going from left to right, and I'm gonna end up using one of these because I'm going from addition or subtraction to multiplication. Okay, so let's start. Firstly, one over sine theta. In order to do this, you have to first choose to combine both of them. So you have to have a single expression. Okay, anytime you're going from here to here, you wanna put this together. So I don't need to multiply. So I multiply this top and bottom. So I'm gonna say one over sine, Theta, so I'm going in this direction now, minus sine theta will be equal to one over sine theta minus sine squared theta over sine theta. Okay, as you can see, I just made this so they have the same denominator. Now I'm gonna add the top. This is equal to one minus sine squared theta over sine theta. What did we say one minus sine squared theta is? Now we've gone from subtraction, we'll automatically go to multiplication. I come here, I need to find one minus sine squared theta. Well, from here, if I move this sine squared theta here, I'm gonna end up with cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. So I'm gonna replace this with cosine squared theta. This is 
cosine squared theta over sine theta. Well, I know that this can be written as cosine theta times cosine theta. And then this sine theta, I put it under one of them because I know where I'm going. I want to get cotangent, so I'm going to get over sine theta. It's multiplication, okay? So it doesn't matter which one takes the cosine. What's the answer here? Well, obviously, this is going to be cotangent, cotangent theta multiplied by cosine theta, which is equal to the right-hand side. And this is what you call the right-hand side. So we've gone from the left to the right. <laughs> okay, so we're starting from the right-hand side now. We want to change this to this. Remember, we still have to pass through the city, the city of the Pythagorean identity. Okay, so here, from the right-hand side, it's just the reverse of the process here. I know that cotangent theta, cosine theta. Now, when, because you don't know any identity, whenever you see anything written, not in terms of sine or cosine, you want to rewrite it immediately. Okay, so here, this is going to be equal to cosine theta over sine theta multiplied by cosine theta. I'm going to put over 1. Now, if I multiply the top and the bottom, what do I end up with? I get cosine squared theta over sine theta. I want to go from a product to something with a minus in between it. So I come back to these chain of whatever. See, I couldn't use this because I needed a cotangent squared, but now I have a square of cosines, so it means I'm going to have cosine. If I move this here, it's going to be 1, so this is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta over sine theta, which I can write as 1 minus sine squared theta, rather. And then I write this over sine theta over sine theta. Remember, you can do that in algebra x plus y over x can be written as x over x plus y over x because you can always come back in this direction which is the same thing as 1 over sine theta minus sine theta this divides you get your sine theta which is the left hand side so we have shown that the right hand side equals the left hand side and we're done with the proof of the identity and that's it. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.